Hello. Welcome to this episode of Dan Splaining. I'm your host. Hey everyone, welcome to another Dan Splaining episode. This is Dan again, the application engineer with Quest. In this episode, we want to talk about all the various things I need to know from you to properly size a dehumidifier. When people call me up, the first thing they say is, Dan, I need a dehumidifier. What do you got? And I say, hold the phone. I'm going to ask you a bunch of really strange questions, but it's all going to a point. I want to find out how much moisture is in your building that we need to get rid of, how much capacity you already have to take it, that moisture out installed, and then we'll figure out what's left. Based on what's left, that's what's going to properly size that dehumidifier for you. The first thing I'm going to need to do is tally up the moisture load in your building. And to do that, we need to look at the largest sources of moisture. People, permeation, process, infiltration, and ventilation. We're going to go through each one of these to help you help me determine what each of these loads is going to be. Let's look at the first one, people. When we start looking at our loads, we need to look at what are the people doing and how much humidity do they add to the building. Let's go to a table such as this. So on this table, we can see various activities in the amount of moisture load associated with it. Everything from a spectator seated at a hockey game or a basketball game putting off a tenth of a pound of water per hour, to somebody working at a desk, or maybe a light activity, light manufacturing, or working in a kitchen. That's gonna range anywhere from a quarter up to a half a pound per hour. As people get more active, they put off more sweat, and that translates into more moisture, all the way up to an NBA athlete that's going to be putting a pound per hour or more into that space. We need to know what they're doing and when they're doing it, and if that is at the peak time that we're trying to take the moisture out of the building. So what you need to do for the people load is take a head count. How many people are in that space, and what are they doing? What's their activity level? So we can determine how much water they're putting into the air. Based on that, we've now got our people moisture load. Our next one is permeation. So that is the flow of moisture in and out of building materials. If the humidity is high in a space, it's naturally going to get absorbed into the floor, into the carpeting, into the walls, into the building materials and the furniture that's in it. And eventually, it's going to get released when the relative humidity goes down. Once in a while, we even get moisture traveling from outside through the building material and on the inside. Not a large load, but it's still something we want to talk about. If you've got a large concrete floor, if you've got thin walls, you should let me know that so we can try to figure out if that's going to be an important load to calculate. The third P, and probably the most important one to our industrial customers, is process load. How much moisture is coming off of the manufacturing process regardless of what you're making? Maybe it's drying off a car part that had to be washed before it's sent off for painting, or we could be drying biomass out of an agricultural process. Spent brewer's grain after they're done with a brewing cycle, or a slurry of dust and debris that needs to be dried down before we send it off for landfill. The last two loads we're looking at is infiltration and ventilation. There are two peas in a pod. Both of them are humidity that's brought into a building by outside air. The difference is infiltration is uncontrolled, ventilation is controlled. If your building is unconditioned by an HVAC system and infiltration is going to be a major factor in your moisture load calculation, things that I'm going to need to know from you, what's the square footage of the space, what's the ceiling height, how tight is that building construction? Is it pretty leaky or did you take time to seal it up properly? I need to know the temperature inside the space and I need to know the temperature outside the space, especially if those temperatures are pretty drastic and will cause a huge driving force. And if you have a cold space with a drastic temperature difference between inside and out, I need to know how big that door is, how often it opens, and how long that door stays open every time it does. These all go into the calculation that I need to do to figure out your infiltration load. Calculating the ventilation load is a much easier process because it's a controlled volume of air that we're bringing into the space. You can find the CFM of outside air that's coming to your space on architectural drawings, on the side of your equipment, or from the architect or engineer who designed your facility. Or, give enough information again, we can make a pretty educated guess on that one. Now we've made it through the most common moisture loads that we see in our facility. As we said before, people, permeation, process, 
infiltration and ventilation. There might be other moisture loads at your facility, but they're not common enough to make this graphic here. Once we have all these numbers, we tally them up and that's the moisture load that we need to take care of. Now we have our total moisture load, but we're not done yet, folks. We need to see how much moisture removal capacity you have already installed in your facility. The biggest example of that will be the air conditioning system you might have installed. That air conditioning system takes a lot of moisture out and I'm gonna need some numbers on that in order to determine what it's doing for you when it's operating. Another big one is exhaust fume hoods. Anytime we have a process that's giving off massive amounts of moisture, we want to put an exhaust capture hood on top of it and try to vent it straight out of the building so it doesn't become a load on our space. We want to take all of these factors into account so we can subtract that from the total we got and see what's left over. What's left over is what sizes your dehumidifier. All right, folks, thanks for sitting through this one. I know it's not the typical dance planning episode, but I really wanted to put something out there for you so you know what to expect when you give us a call at Quest. Because we're going to ask you a lot of strange questions, but it's all leading somewhere. It's leading towards the proper sizing of your dehumidifier that's going to take care of your facility. Till next time, it's Dan. We'll see you later.